Today on Around Kansas, Deb encourages us to pick up some Kansas travel brochures as we're out and about and take a Kansas-cation. Next in our wildlife, it's about this pesky molar moss. On the front porch, we have part one of our interview with astronaut Nick Haig. Ron Wilson entertains us with another poem, and we end with another amazing story from Michelle Martin, this time about the famous fashion designer, Nellie Donnelly. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Deb Goodrich. Welcome to Around Kansas. Here we are in the middle of June. Can you believe it? Survived this far. So Nick Apt was sharing on Facebook the other day the new brochure for Little Jerusalem. And it looks amazing. And it looks amazing because it is amazing. And Nick took some amazing photographs. So we're very proud of all the stuff that Nick helps us with. He's uh, just a super nice guy. Just had a birthday uh, recently, and I think I missed it. I think I forgot to wish him happy birthday. So happy birthday, Nick. And speaking of brochures, I was uh, just checking out some the other day. Coffeeville. It's been a while since I've been to Coffeeville. And I sure miss it. I haven't gotten down to the southeastern part of the state or southern edge of the state in a while in that vicinity. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous brochure. They did an absolutely uh, phenomenal job with this. And this does exactly what a brochure is meant to do. It makes me want to go. So let's all go meet in Coffeeville. And then this is um, a great little brochure, the Kansas Antique trail so you can find this online kansasantiquetrail.com and of course i love antiques uh, dr jake loves antiques that's why he loves me so much cool stuff and see so you've got this little map oops back at you people got this cool little map here so all over all around kansas you got antiques all around kansas and I bet if you get on the road looking for these places, you'll find a few others along the way. And, of course, one of my favorite places, downtown Hayes, Hayes City. I'll call my friend Beth, and I'll say, hey, I'm in Hayes City. And she says, you mean Hayes, USA. And I'm like, in my century, it was Hayes City. Back when Buffalo Bill and Wild Bill and all those guys were walking the streets, it was Hayes City. So... Love to go to Hayes. Fortunately, we're not too far from Hayes, so we get to go pretty often. Um, visit the uh, Sternberg, Hayes Sternberg, and of course, Fort Hayes. And uh, there's a lot in between. Those are kind of like the two bookends of the town. The Sternberg Museum, Fort Hayes, and of course, the Sternberg is part of the Fort Hayes University system. So that all started with the fort there along the Smoky Hill Trail. So it's really, really cool stuff. Emporia. Again, it's been a while since I've been in downtown Emporia. And of course, the William Allen White House. There's so much to do in Emporia. That's a really wonderful town. So just one of the things I wanted to say, when you see these brochures, for one thing, if you pick up a brochure, don't just toss it. You know, folks put a lot of time and money into producing these things, and they are expensive to print. So 
you know, take them and enjoy them, pass them along, put them back in the display if um, you're not going to use it, and just, just you know, don't be wasteful with those brochures. Take them to heart. Uh, take a photo of them and put it back for the next person. Um, but more importantly, go visit all those places. Got a great show for you today, so stay with us. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're gonna find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. Well, it's kind of quiet in here right now, but do you know what? When I got up this morning, I think I killed 10 or 20 millers in, in the window. You know, they were all trying to get to the light. The millers have been driving us crazy. Now, I don't know if, uh, and this is not the family of Millers, you know, so don't anybody get excited, but it's that little annoying moth that is totally harmless, I think, but it just will drive you crazy, and they have been insane this year. They're everywhere, so I'm like, is it just me, or are they really that abundant this year, or much more abundant than other years? According to Colorado State University, they are way more abundant this year. So let's talk about those annoying little creatures and where they come from, what they're all about. According to Colorado State Entomologist, it's moth season. No one had to tell me the flying nuisances are everywhere. Millers, so named because of the dust they leave behind, just like someone milling wheat or corn, are an inch or so long, brownish gray, unremarkable little creatures. Most seasons, they go virtually unnoticed, but after four years of especially low numbers, they have come back with a vengeance. The miller is the adult stage of the army cutworm, and while the miller is pretty harmless, its larval stage is not. Cutworms can damage crops and already have, in western Kansas and Nebraska and eastern Colorado. The good news, the miller does not lay eggs in your house, nor is it eating Granny's Afghan. It is just going to annoy you by flying around the same light you are using to read, or your computer screen. To keep the creatures at bay, seal obvious openings around the windows and doors, turn out as many lights as possible. An easy trap to make is to suspend a light bulb over a bucket partially filled with soapy water. Always use a grounded plug and extreme caution with any electrical device near water. The best fix is probably your kitchen sink, which already has a light above it. Just fill with soapy water and turn the other lights off. Millers are attracted to the light and often will fall into the water and drown. Or you could take the fly swat and give them some encouragement. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, 
beautiful scenery and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. This segment brought to you by Bob Schwartz Financial. Values, commitment, transparency. Hoxie, Kansas native and astronaut Nick Hegg returned from the International Space Station in October of last year. And in the first few days of being back on the planet Earth, I asked Nick to describe his experience of being in orbit. It's really one of the biggest challenges I'm going to have for the rest of my life is trying to fully describe that experience and, and do it justice with words. Uh, so I'm going to try. Being able to look out the window and see such a large swath of the world, uh, you're high enough up that you feel like you're away from, it, like you really are off the planet. You know, and I can look up and, you know, it, it's easy for me to see all of Kansas. In, in, in one view. And it's not just all of Kansas. It's, it's all of Kansas and Nebraska and Wyoming and Colorado and Utah. You can see all of that in just one, one snapshot. And, and to see there's just no borders. There's no, the, what you really start to embrace is that this, the world that we live on is, is this living organism. There's, you know, the countries that, and, and the borders that we're always uh, thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis, those all just kind of melt away. And you start to see this giant ecosystem uh, where humans live and you see the, the large global forces, the weather forces, and, and, and just how it, all, how it all breathes in and out. And you start to gain this real appreciation for how special the Earth is because you don't have to look too much left or right and then you see the dark of space. And, you know, during the daytime, if the Earth is bright enough, you can't really see any of the stars uh, that are in the sky. Um, and so you see the Earth as this, as this oasis, this blue and green and vibrant oasis in the middle of this just black ocean of darkness. And you realize we're in a really special place. And, and you also realize that we're all in it together. You know, whether, whether I'm in Kansas or whether I'm, uh, you know, on the opposite side of the world, we're all on this island together. And uh, you just come back with this perspective of, of you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate. And, and, and along with being fortunate comes the responsibility to do what we can to be great stewards of, of this special place. And Nick, with that being said, can you uh, tell us a little bit about working with uh, uh, with officials and professionals from other countries, uh, like your cosmonauts you worked with on the space station? Yeah, absolutely. That is one of the the most profound takeaways that I'm going to to walk away from this entire experience with is that uh, it was just such a special opportunity to be able to work 
with our partners, whether they're in Japan or or Germany or you know the European countries as part of the European Space Agency, uh, or you know our, our our colleagues in in Moscow or up in Canada. You know we've got this massive team spread across the globe, and you know I got to meet and work side by side and be trained by these uh, these professionals. Uh, for the two years leading up to launch. So it was no surprise to me by the time I got on orbit just how special of a team we were in. But to be up there and and be right in the mix of it and see the machine working and keeping us busy every day and, and continuing to give us you know groundbreaking science uh, to do up there to collect the data so that we can get it down to the researchers on the ground and, and they can make their discoveries. Uh, it was just such a, a profound uh, experience to be able to see how when we come together uh, across the globe how we can leverage all of our diversity uh, and and be stronger because of it um, it's it's, uh, it's just a unique opportunity I'm Bob Swartz and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm at Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, we'll be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. My wife and family and I live on the Lazy T Ranch near Manhattan, Kansas. We run cattle and horses and some other animals. If you have livestock in the hot summer heat, then you're going to have flies, and we contend with flies. This poem I wrote is called fly right. Three cowboys from different places came into a Texas saloon for a drink to relieve their hot afternoon. The flies were buzzing from near and from far as the three cowboys took their place at the bar. Each ordered a drink as they had planned, but into each drink a fly did land. The first cowboy turned green at the bug in his drink. To the bartender he said, I'll have a different one, I think. The second cowboy stopped, slowly fished out the bug, and finally drank the beer with a shrug. But the third cowboy was from Kansas, where times were tough, and he wasn't about to put up with this stuff. He knew this behavior just had to stop, because he came from Kansas, where we don't waste a drop. So the cowboy grabbed the bug and, with a big shout, held it over the glass and said, Now you spit that out. Happy trip. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Kansans have a new choice for Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans. With Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans from Kansas Farm Bureau, you have access to four levels of coverage, affordable rates, and service from an organization that's served Kansans for more than 100 years. For more information on Kansas Farm Bureau Medicare Supplement Plans, including rates and to apply, visit kfbhealthplans.com.
This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Speaking of remarkable women, yes, we were. See My little goodies that my friend Michelle sent me. Well, Michelle is always blessing us with cool stuff. And this morning she has another episode on an amazing woman that you might not have heard of. This is, uh, honestly, I was not familiar with this lady's story. And that's why we have Michelle, because she just is a wealth of knowledge, and we love having her join us on Wednesday mornings. Good morning, Michelle. Hey, good morning, Deb, and good morning to all our viewers. When Ellen Quinlan was born in 1889 in the southeast Kansas town of Parsons, little could anyone imagine the life she would lead. One of 12 siblings, Ellen left for Kansas City and would go on to become one of the most important fashion designers and producers in American history. Let's meet Nell Donnelly Reed. On March 6, 1889, Kate Quinlan gave birth to a baby girl in Parsons, Kansas. Ellen, called Nell or Nellie by her family and friends, was just one of the Quinlan's 12 children. After graduating from Parsons High School in 1904, young Nell left her hometown for the bright lights of Kansas City. While working as a stenographer, Nell met Paul Donnelly, who lived in the same boarding house. By 1905, Nell was a 17-year-old bride. Paul encouraged Nell to attend Lindenwood College outside St. Louis. While there, Nell was an excellent student and active in numerous clubs. She was the only married student at the college. After Lindenwood, Nell settled into domestic life. While at college, she learned the ins and outs of dressing well. Nell insisted that even though most women worked in the home, that didn't mean they should not look stylish. Most women settled for drab Mother Hubbard dresses that cost 69 cents. Armed with sewing skills, Nell created functional, stylish aprons and house dresses. She showed them to her friends and they were a hit. In 1916, Nell started making her patented handy-dandy apron and house dresses in her home. With help from her friends and two industrial sewing machines, Nell produced over 200 pieces for Peck Dry Goods in Kansas City. Selling for a dollar a piece, Nell's aprons and house dresses were more expensive, but women snapped them up. In 1919, Nell and Paul formed the Donnelly Garment Company and the Nellie Don Fashion Empire was born. Good fit, durability, and attractive designs were the hallmarks of the Nellie Don label. By 1931, the company made $3.5 million and employed over 1,000 people, mainly women. Nell cared for her employees. They had a wide range of benefits that other employers did not provide, including educational assistance for employees and their children, an on-site clinic, health benefits, pension plans, and safe, clean working conditions. One of the most intriguing events of Nell's life took place in December 1931 when she and her chauffeur were abducted at gunpoint. They were spirited away from the city and held for $75,000 ransom in Bonner Springs. With the assistance of James A. Reed, a well-known Kansas City politician and neighbor of the Donnellys, Nell was found and freed. In 1932, Nell and Paul divorced, and she became the sole shareholder of the Donnelly Garment Company. By 1933, Nell found love once again with none other than her neighbor, James Reed. During World War II, Nell was asked by the War Department if she could mass-produce uniforms for women's military units. She said she could, but not if they were unattractive and ill-fitting. Once again, Nell's mantra of style and function came together, and the company produced uniforms for women serving in the armed forces. After the war, the Donnelly Garment Company was the largest manufacturer of women's clothing in the world. In 1956, Nell retired from the company that bore her name. She spent the rest of her days involved in charity work. When she died in 1991 at the age of 102, Nell Quinlan Donnelly Reed was heralded as a pioneering business entrepreneur and philanthropist. And to think, it all started while sewing around the kitchen table with her mother and sister in Parsons. I hope you enjoyed our trip back in time today and that you'll join me next time for another historical adventure somewhere around Kansas. I'm Deb Goodrich. Thank you for joining me this morning, and I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.
In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have. My name is Karen Cope, and I have multiple sclerosis. When you have MS, on the outside you look great. But you know what's really going on in the inside is chronic body pain, chronic fatigue. And there's lots of days that I'd wake up and say, well, oh, please God, help me get through this day. You know, after stem cells, Chloe, my youngest daughter, she was asked by my father-in-law, how's your mom doing? And Chloe said, uh, Grandpa, I've never had a mom like this before, because she was eight when I was diagnosed, and she really had no other memory of me but being sick. It's really the simple things that we do as a family, like play cards and, and to be able to win at cards, you know, they all laugh because I used to repeat myself and say, what hand are we on? You know, what's, where are we at? And it's just been really a, a true blessing from God and we're, we're really thankful. <laughs> 